Zazz. Oh, yes. Fitzy. And Whipper. Uh, g'day, guys. Welcome to the podcast. Fitzy, how are you, mate? Nah, he's not here. Sorry, guys. I just looked around. He's taken off early. Um, this is a good podcast to be tuning into because we've all been at a restaurant where there's been a blow up. Maybe you found something in your food. God, my old man was famous for saying, hey, get me the manager. That's not beef. That's pork. Anyway, uh, we want to know after James Corden was told he was a cretin, he's been banned from a restaurant for life. We want to know the worst customer service you've ever seen or patrons acting up. We'll tell you more very soon on this podcast. The, the, the Fitzy and Whipper podcast. Update on the James Corden Belfazar situation, guys. We know that he was booted out of the restaurant and given a life ban by McNally, I think his name is. McNally, who owns Belfazar. He's got a high profile chef, he's a restaurateur. Um, he booted him out and said, In 25 years of being in this game, I've never come across a ruder patron than James Corden. Gordon. Oh, big, big call. Well, Corden's call. got straight on the blower, didn't he, and apologised. He did, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then um, he, he retracted his apo- he retracted his his blow up, didn't he? The, the the restaurant owner said, "I'm sorry." He said, "Sorry," which is good. He's moved mm. on. Mm. But mm. you know what? You do ruin someone's reputation. Absolutely. That was a big one. And you're right. Corden has now come out. He said, "Although I've apologised, I just wanted to add to that a little bit, guys. I don't really think I've done anything wrong." Mm. He said, "I feel so zen about the whole thing because I think it's so silly. It's beneath all of us. It's beneath me. It's beneath you." Do you know what? He, I, I, he did an interview. He did an interview for a magazine over the weekend. I did read that, mm. right? And he did the interview in a restaurant. And while they were in the restaurant doing the interview with James Corden, there was a woman in the background complaining to the staff about how her eggs were cooked. <laughs> no I'm not, way. I'm not joking. Which was yeah. the Corden story. And there was Corden, a little bit of yolk in the white. And Corden goes, see, this happens... Thousands oh, and thousands of times, thousands and thousands of times every day in restaurants across the world. I was the one that got exposed for it, and unfortunately, mm. it's blown up. I didn't think it was that big. Thirteen twenty four ten. If you're in the restaurant game, uh, tell us about the worst custom you've ever seen. Uh, what was great over the weekend? They did a whole lot of interviews too of restaurateurs and chefs that you would know here in Sydney talking about their worst customers and whether they've given anybody a lifetime ban. So they spoke to good old Luke Mangan, who we know, and that bar Tommy on the tower that Luke Mangan's opened. Oh, yeah, in the South Tower. Of South the Tower. Of the bridge. Yes. How big is that? I'm not sure. I think you can get maybe uh, it's either 20 or 40 people in there. Wow. My God. Yeah. Book that in, please, Tom. Uh, he came out and said, look, he actually knows McNally, the guy who runs Belfazar in New York, and said for this to have happened, it would have been quite extreme. Mm. He's not the type of guy to throw somebody out of a restaurant and give them a life ban uh, at the drop of a hat. He said, I can't mention names, but I've had customers also, which I've had to say, please don't come back back. He said, I was at my other restaurant, Luke's Kitchen, and I got a call. I decided to come up and meet with the staff. They'd been rude to his staff. The patron had been rude to his staff. He said, I went over there and I said, look, we've done everything we can to make you happy. My team has bent over backwards and it doesn't seem to be enough for you. So I think it's best that you leave and never come back. Politely put, though. Very politely put. Who else is... Oh, Faz stepped up as well, Colin Faznich. He said, I've kicked people out for doing so many different things on so many different occasions. He said, from stealing soap in the bathroom to slapping waitresses on the backside. He said, you would see plenty of that in the olden days and I never stood for it, so I would just boot them out. Mm. It's just amazing how people... He said, people that. steal hand dryers from the wall in the bathroom. I mean, that's... Soap yeah. dispensers, toilet paper. That's hard. You've got to rip them off really hard. And then he says, a bit of power. just drunk D-heads that have had far too much wine. I kick them out. Good on him. Eric in Liverpool, he works in the hospitality business. What worst customer behaviour that you've experienced, Eric? Uh, so we've had a customer complain about what they paid. Um, this is Sorry, this is a retail story. Um but someone uh, complained about the price that they paid for a shirt because they got it off the wrong rack. They, they basically grabbed my manager's lanyard and she was like, touch me again and we're going to have to take this outside. Oh. They, proceeded to, they proceeded to provoke my manager. She took them outside. It, punches were exchanged Jeez. and security had to pull them off each other. You're kidding me. Yeah. Was that girl on girl, Over Eric? five bucks. Um, no, it was a man. 
Oh, my God. Wow. Oh, my God. That is phenomenal. How scary. Thanks, Eric. I mean, it can get quite boring at work sometimes, oh. but every now and then it's good just to spice <laughs> it up, isn't it? How do I say this name here? Is it Mark um, Zuckerberg? Polosi? He's got Beppi's, the Italian restaurant. Polisi? Yeah, and he talks about one um, very, very high-profile person that would come in, and he'd come in as a regular, then all of a sudden... He started to say what he wanted to pay for things. So he would order a very expensive oh, bottle of wine that might bartering. be $400 and he'd say, I think I'll pay 300 for that. How annoying. Oh. oh, my God. Tabitha in St. Mary. Welcome to the show, Tab. Hi, guys. How are you? What happened to you with an unhappy customer? Well, I work in a pharmacy and the customer was obviously sick. So he came to the chemist and wanted a certain medication and we didn't have it in stock. And... We told him, like, hey, sorry, the item's out of stock. We, we don't actually have a replacement. This customer just lost it, started throwing items around, oh, and carrying on at us. Yeah. And, like, we ended up having to get security to take him out. But, like, we, we couldn't help it. We don't make the... No, no, no. Did you hit the deck? Did you hide, Tabitha? Oh, I, I sort of just sort of pull back into my little shell and I'm just like someone else take over like yeah. I, can't, I don't do consultations very God, well there's so. a Rex owner can oh, flying just, at your head what was it, hay yeah, fever pretty much, pretty much. I mean, if you can't get your Zyrtex, I mean, oh, hay fever can it. really kick in. All right, thank you. <laughs> Curtis Stone, I think he was at the airport. He's been asked about it too in terms of uh, customer service and what you do and can you or have you ever banned somebody for life from a restaurant? Have a listen to what he says. I'm surprised James Corden's always been an absolute gentleman in our restaurant. He's always been a lovely guest. He's always been very kind and friendly to the staff. I'm shocked to hear that. He's a great customer. A great yeah. customer. There you go. If you've seen a horrible case of rude customer, we'd love your story. Nicole, welcome to the show. Hi, guys. What, how are you going? What's your story, Nick? Um, so I used to work in a pub. It was a notorious one in Parramatta. And we this night, it was just me on and my manager. And these two guys came in, kind of cooked already. And they were saying to the security guard, just be cool, just be cool. And we, I was like, oh, my God, what are they about to do? Oh, no. Um, I look up, and they're both completely naked, chasing each other around the pool table. Oh, oh. well, we've all done yeah, it. Just, well, <laughs> and that's a good Never night out. Wow. <laughs> so, Obviously, you didn't have any cues there for them, Nicole. Uh, no, they had the big pool sticks, and they were chasing <laughs> yeah, each other. Yeah, they did. What's weird, I mean, normally, if you were to lose or it was a clean sweep, of course, someone might do a lap of the table with their oh, pants down. Yes. But this is different. They <laughs> were if both... you don't pot a ball, that yeah, is the rules, yeah. isn't it? But, but they're both doing but it. But they're both completely naked running around the table. I don't know what's going on there. So I went and got my manager, and he was like, right, time for them to go. Yeah, so fair him And the security guard kicked them out, didn't give them their clothes back. Oh, no. Didn't give them their clothes back? <laughs> I didn't give them... Our pub crawl's coming up, Tommy. Yeah, yeah, oh, very we, soon. I think we need to go out to Parramatta uh, you, you again. Re- you reckon it's pants down? Well, no, Rose and Crown. Remember we mm. went to the Rose and Crown? With Faye? Yeah, Faye oh, was she, beautiful. Faye, Faye got in a bit of trouble. Faye's didn't? not there anymore. Yeah. But she was... This is what pub... The pub community is just mm. brilliant. You get mm. to know your local publican and you develop a great relationship. Jeez, they would see some horrible stuff on the weekends, wouldn't they? Well, Faye was a firecracker, wasn't she? Oh, she was I nearly, awesome. I nearly pulled the pin on the whole tour and went upstairs with Faye. Well, yeah. My God. Very you degree, actually. Really? Considering that you hooked up with a 70-year-old in Vegas it, one time. Is that the only reason it's very amazing? Because mm-hmm. she's an old woman. Mm-hmm. Okay. Don't call her old. She's mature. Yes, yeah, she's, she's mature. How, was the girl on the, how old was the girl on the bus in Vegas? Ah, oh, roughly 85. She's old. That's yeah. old. That's mature. And well, that's what happens in Vegas. Senior. Yeah. Distinguished. It doesn't happen in Vegas, mate. It does. Doesn't, doesn't everyone hook up with an 85-year-old woman on a bus? The martyr? No. Oh. Nope. Okay. Just you, big guy. Mis- misread that play. Yet again. Oh, God, that was one of the mo- one of the low points. And there's been a few. Yeah, it's quite a few. Yeah. We'll go through them today, uh, tomorrow. Top Great. five, Matt DeGroote's <laughs> lowest points in his life. Are you ready to put your pool floaties to work? Start planning the ultimate summer getaway with whatif.com. Find hotels and holiday rentals plus family-friendly resorts. Just jump on the What If app. What If. It's Aussie for travel. Married at first sight, we're only not that far. We're at the end of the year, so we've just got to brace ourselves for 2023 and that show coming back. I mean, it's so popular, that show. There's been a couple of spin-offs. I think the producers of that show are now doing Love Triangle on Stan as well. Mm, yep. Um, what's There's another one coming out. Your mum, my dad. Yeah. Yeah, something... your dad, my brother, uh, my uncle, your auntie. Yeah, well, that could be, yeah, that's an interesting show that we could watch. Um, stepmum, stepdad, <laughs> cousin, brother, and 
stepdaughter? We need we need to focus on the big one though, because Married at First Sight. I mean, it's taken this country by storm. Whether you love it or you hate it, unfortunately, people watch it. What do you make? What do you make of Love Boat? You've been watching the. Well, yeah, yeah, that's... Uh, Love Boat? Yep, that's Is it called go- Love Boat? Yep, that's yeah. been going all right. That's still on air as well, on yep. Channel 10 as well. A lot of dating shows now, but Married at First Sight, I mean, it's that concept when you first thought about it and just went, oh, my gosh, how can you... How can you actually have a commitment like that with someone that you've only just met? Yeah. This is going to be a disaster. And that's what the show is all about. Watching it's the about disaster. disasters. And then they decided to incorporate, well, why don't we get one couple... Why don't we get one of that that bride to maybe hook up with that groom and they can partner swap? That took it to another level, didn't it? The show should really be called Partner Swap. Or just change the title from MAFS to halfway through the season, just call it Partner Swap. So we all know what's about to happen. What I'm going to ask for this morning, though, is real life married at first sights. How quickly did you meet the first person for the first time before you got married? 13, 20, 14. Remember, anyone that gets on the show, you go into the running for 10K a day in October. Because I've got one from the weekend. A mate of mine had a mate. His name is Jeff. Now, he met Evandra online, Sarah, three years ago. Right? Now, they were doing Zoom calls, fell in love online. Mm. Jeff hasn't met Evandra before. She landed in Sydney three days ago Uh and they got married over the weekend. That's it there. Oh, that looks really sweet, though. She's gorgeous. And and the message from my mate said, all going well thus far. Three days she's been on Australian soil. There's been opportunities where she tried to get over, and obviously with the pandemic the last few years, but you know what? This was... She, just, ar- she arrived in Sydney three days before the wedding and they got married on Saturday. Did he pay for the flight? Yes. Because he sent any other money over. Did she bring family? It's a very lonely wedding if it's just... Oh, more to the point says, how could you really trust this person was who you'd been talking to for three years? What do you mean? Well, I've, I, this person lives another world that I don't see. But right? why would they lie? Because this is what happens. Because maybe she's in it for some money. Maybe she wants to get out of her country and come and enjoy the beautiful privileges of living in Australia. There's loads of reasons why somebody might do this. How nerve-wracking would he be, Jeff, Mm. at the airport waiting for her to arrive? First of all, number one, is she going to be on the flight? Yep. Mm -hmm. Number two, does she look like... What, what I pictures, see, yeah. what I see, and number three is she freaking out as well. You've got to think of her. How son. nervous is Jeff on the on the wedding night? Wow, this... I mean, you've never been there before, and for the two of them, I bet it's like anyone it who could be a it? stumbling mess. This is a huge commitment by her and to him. Fly f- from the other side of the world over three days before you're about to get married. Where's she from? She's from Brazil. No, I think it's lovely. I don't know about They this. look happy. They both look glamorous. When you say to your mum and dad, you're not going to believe if I've met somebody, oh, where did you meet them? In the city or just through some friends? No, online. How long have you been seeing them? For three years. Well, online? Yeah, we're in love. Oh, but the pandemic and stuff. Hey, they haven't arrived yet. This is Monday. They haven't arrived yet, but we're getting married on Saturday. What, what? do you mean? You've never physically touched this person? Wouldn't you? I agree. Wouldn't you actually try to make it work first, spend a bit of time with each other before actually getting Just married? Be careful, you have to Jeff. Do it straight away. I would love to get married at first sight stories. How quick was it? Whether you met the first person mm-hmm. physically as well, how quickly did you get married? There'd be a couple of guys I would have thought that have been to Vegas where you can run off to the little white chapel or whatever it's called and do it that night. Didn't Britney do that with she her did. original guy? Yeah, yeah, when she was 18, I think. Jason Alexander. They just decided to do it on the night just mm-hmm. after they met. God, if we ever went to Vegas, says no, you and stop I. Stop looking at me. Nothing. Sorry about that. You right. and I would dip. If there was a, a button I could push to bring a screen up between our seats. Like a bank security It'd be like screen. a bank security. So much faster, though. The Fitzy and Whipper podcast. AGT, guys. Great show. I don't know if I've ever told you this. It's always been my dream to be well, like one a person on the panel of one of these shows. Mm. Australia's Got Fun. Talent. Uh, Australia's Got Talent. Australian Idol. Whatever it is, I love the idea. I mean, to be on The Voice would be phenomenal. Mm. Just trying to get a feel for somebody in their act and trying to work out where their act sits in terms of talent and what you're actually looking for on the show. They do a great job. You Cast see, is great on AGT. Your audition, you're obviously trying to throw no, it out there too. No, I don't want to audition. What, what are your credentials, though? This is the thing. Um, observer of life. 
You could do AGT. Yeah, good. Sponge of life. Idol of voice. Yeah, I'd be fine I with don't it. Know. Yeah, if your if, singing's a bit rubbish. If you're a professional artist going on AGT, I don't know if you could well, listen, what's, listen to the advice that you get from Michael well, what's, Whitfleet. what's Shane Jacobson? Well, he's a performer. But they don't he's give them advice. He does musicals. We perform for three hours every day, mate. No. Nah. Every I don't know day. if you're that good at it. Huh? AGT, you don't have to give advice, though. You just have to choose what entertains you. That's a yes from me. That's a yes from me. Oh, That's boring. a yes from me. Well, what kind, of, what kind of judge would you be? Would you be the hard one? Oh, I, no, I can't no, believe I, he said that about Paul that, Lynn's that's dress. That's dated. That's gone. I would be the constructive one. And I would go, oh, hey, yeah. that's great. Like, there was a guy last night who performed. All he did was balance things on his chin. Like, don't get me wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you would give advice. I got Nova's Christmas party for you. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> the items got bigger. So he started with a ta- uh, like a card table. Then he went up to a giant ladder and he was balancing things. Then it was like 20 milk crates on his chin. Oh. The act and the art of balance is not that impressive. So don't get me wrong. The weight on your chin and the strength of your neck, maybe. But it certainly wouldn't have got a yes from me. What do you do next, mate? No one's coming back for that. We've seen you balance one thing, now you're you balancing are the mean five. Judge. So you, I'm not the mean, I'm the constructive judge. Mm. I mean, who, if you actually had to go on the show as a contestant, mm. what do you go on there as? The guy who broke the Hot Wheels record for the longest track? Tell you what, people would love that. Boring. If I did that mixed in with me playing sexual healing on the guitar, that's a yes from me. And that's with the yes chins, you'd just be a triple oh, threat. Yeah. The chin. Z- there was some great acts last night. I mean, Magic Mike, who's a mate of ours and friend yeah. of the show, came on and did a fantastic piece, which really was a card trick based on mental health, which I thought was sensational. The other thing you start to pick up on, too, is that when the judges on the panel are worded up on the contestants, so they're told their backstory, or maybe you've seen them before. It happens on The Voice a lot, when someone will turn around and then Guy will go, haven't we seen you before? And they'll go, yeah, I tried out three years ago. Mm. But guys obviously been worded up. <laughs> well, you don't oh, know that, but yeah, sometimes... Nah, well, like... they do, you do know See, that. Yeah. I mean, these on, talent not... shows have been going for so long, they have to re- I mean, regurgitate, don't I'm they? Not, Maybe. I'm not giving away uh, any secret to the best magic trick ever says. Mm. I think everybody knows that there must be someone in your ear going, oh, oh hang on a minute, you were... Um... I think they gave it away last night. Okay. Because I think the stretch and the length they tried to make was just too far apart. So what we're going to hear first is the back end story of this 51-year-old called Bevan. I'm Bevan Adensall, I'm 51 and I'm a singer from Victoria. Well, I started on a TV show called Young Talent Time when I was 12. That's how people would know me, I guess. I'd like to introduce you to Bevan Adensall. Oh. It was such a huge show, we used to do concerts to, you know, up, up to 50,000 people at times. If you make your move, I won't hesitate. If it takes too long, you can be too late. So Bevan was on Young Talent Time. So he's 51. So we're, we're it talking... It was 39 years ago. 39 years ago. Okay. All of a sudden he comes on stage. Yeah. Shane Jacobson. 39 years ago. As a moment. Hello. Hey, mate, I was going to ask you your name. <laughs> Bevan, that's you. It is. Hey, mate, oh, how are you? Really well, thank you. Yourself? I'm, I'm great. This is Bevan. Okay. Um, uh, oh, Bevan was on... I know who you are, From Bevan. Young Town no, you Time. From the what? <laughs> the producers just took a <laughs> bit too far <laughs> while they tried to convince the audience and he looked nothing no, like he did on Young Talent Time. I remember you as a 12-year-old on, on Young Talent Time. <laughs> you were, you were. Here's a little bit of Bevan. Oh, yeah. He's good. Oh, he got four yeses, says. And then afterwards on the show, they continued to reinforce. Yeah, of course, you remember Bevan. Yeah, I know Bevan. Gosh. Everybody knows Bevan. <laughs> Nobody knows Bevan. <laughs> Absolutely no one. The Fitzy and Whipper podcast. Uh, did anyone hear about the festival over the weekend that was the Emo Dream? So this is in Las Vegas. What? It's called When We Were Young. And, I mean, they had some great bands on the on the lineup. Paramore was on there. Remember Paramore? Emos love Paramore. I mean, this young lady, when you think Emo, you think it's... Oh, yeah. Uh, Levine was on there. Do you remember these guys? 
Who's that? Rejects. Yeah. Rejects. And then when, when you think of emo, I mean, the number one band, without a doubt, has to be these guys. A young boy, My Chemical Romance, for any kid. Coming to Australia. To no, no. Oh, yeah, they yeah, are. Yeah, they are. Yeah, they... So this was an emo festival, and there was, so I, I, we're talking 50 bands, emo, and everyone came around from all over the world into Las Vegas. Leading up to the festival, though, there was a few problems. First of all... Next year's lineup got leaked and they sold out. So they went with it and said, Oh, yeah, this is next year's lineup. Blink 182, there was all mm-hmm. these other bands on oh, there. Wow. That got sold out straight away. So they so they actually they put up next year's festival, Sarah, without even going through this festival yet. Uh, then there was a big blow up going, apparently a majority of the bands at next year's festival don't even know that they're playing. Amazing. Oh. Yeah. They sold it out. People travelled from all over the world for this festival on the weekend. A couple of hours before they were going to start it, they all got an announcement saying the wind's going to be too much today. Huh? We've got to call off the festival. What, where's the show? No, yeah, the wind's really Vegas. going to pick up. It was in Las Vegas. Yeah, but what, what is it, outdoors? Well, this is the, it is outdoors, but I, I, I don't think... I've never heard wind shutting down a festival. Yeah. Wind is tricky because when you've got so much eyeliner on... You don't want it smudging <laughs> across your face. Well, it has to be hot then, doesn't it? Yeah. I guess because it's a desert, it must be well, sand sandstorm. Wind. Yeah, really dangerous. Have a look at this guy from his hotel room. He couldn't see the wind. Where is the wind? <laughs> I'd love to know where the extreme winds are. Can someone oh. please tell me where the wind is? It's... Thanks when we are young. It's oh, kind of enough. ironic that it's an emo festival and there was a lot of people getting emotional. Very emotional. <laughs> I mean, people travel from all over the world. So we've travelled five and a half thousand miles to come to the When We Were Young Festival. It's been cancelled because it's a little bit windy. Well done, Live Nation. Look yeah. at all these people who maybe have a once in a lifetime opportunity to come to Las Vegas and wow. spend two grand on the flight. Oh, what a riot. Oh, there'll be tears, oh, mate. This is yeah. the new fire festival. You can imagine. Well, it gives them something to be emotional about, doesn't doesn't it? it? We just wanted to get together and cry just because that's who we are. Listen to music. Now we're going to do it without the music. Hi, Mum. It was the wind. (laughs) Well, that's what the purpose of the festival was. The Fitzy and Whipper podcast. Lights, camera, hilarity. The top trending stories in entertainment this morning. So Matthew Perry, a.k.a. Chandler from Friends. We remember we spoke about this last Friday when we found out just how he'd become addicted to drugs. and Like 14 stomach operations or something? Yeah, the jet ski accident. He was on 55 Vicodin a day, bottle of vodka, the whole bit. So he's more details have come out. He's doing this, obviously there's the book, but then this interview with Diane Sawyer. That's how we're getting all these things, and I think it is in the States tonight. Um, So basically he says that of all the friends, they were all great, but Jennifer Aniston called him on at first and was like you're drinking and we know it and she has pretty much called him every day since wow so that right? they are super close wow the thing is he hit on her <laughs> early on oh you'd have because, to have a swing wouldn't you well they yeah. knew each other before friends and so he'd sort of made a move and he said it was so awkward but then obviously once on set everything maybe else maybe now's the over. time says I would think not he also talked about oh. the fact he hooked up with Gwyneth Paltrow in a cupboard before they were both huge he wow was, he was just about to start um, shooting friends she was obviously just, she hadn't even started dating Brad Pitt at that mm-hmm. point. And he said it was the one time in the world that, <clears throat> excuse, me, excuse me, the two of us hooking up and no one in the world cared mm. and everything changed after that. <sighs> the big one though, and we knew that he dated Julia Roberts, but sort of not. We never really knew these details. So they secretly dated for a while. The thing is, she chased him down and then wanted to be on Friends. Mm-hmm. Um, and she said when they reached out, she said, I'll only be in Friends if you can put my storyline with Matthews. Yeah. Uh, anyway, so the two of them were flirting and all this sort of stuff. But this is so long ago <laughs> that they had to flirt over facts because there weren't oh. even mobile phones. Imagine oh, how, you're kidding me. Imagine so, how hard that would be, trying so, to fax each other the whole time. So he, he says that he would sit by the fax machine. They would literally oh, send each God. other hundreds and wait for it to come through. Oh, hang on, be there. Julia Roberts. You'd be there for hours. No, nah, can't do Thursday night. I'll write back <laughs> Wednesday. No, no, and that was that was sort of how it went. He was at a party, he said, and he was sort of flirting with this really beautiful woman, um, and he said, 
but he was so like thinking, is there a fax from Julia? So awesome. he left and went home. There was one. Anyway, in the end, she rocked up on Matthew Perry's doorstep and they became very close. Uh, oh, and they faxed each other's brains. Whoa. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. That is very good from okay. you. Okay. Um, but then, yeah, he, he broke up with her. Um, oh, because he, he just said he was so insecure and obviously things were happening for that, him. That would have been earlier, Julia Roberts. She would have been huge oh, he, then. He said that the big moment... So he broke up with her because he said he always just thought she was going to dump him. I'm never. He never thought he was good enough to be in the relationship. And he said it was a real moment. He was lying in rehab in probably one of his lowest points and there she was winning an Oscar. He was watching on TV. Wow. And he said he just looked Whoops. at it and thought, I'm not in that world anymore, am I? Oh, come on, mate. Back no. yourself. Do you know what I, you know what I find weird about the facts too? Mm. The phone was obviously invented before the facts. I know. So why aren't you just calling, mate? Don't know. Well, they did eventually. She then said, but this is the thing. In in the version that you might text, he didn't have her number. They were just faxing each other wow. for months, hundreds oh, of them. I can't give you my number. mobile. Oh, sorry. I can't give you my landline, but I can give you my fax number. Fax number. You anyway. saucy thing. There you go. Guys, Gina Davis, famously known for her role in Thelma and Louise and plenty of others, but this is the, the big one. She was on Graham Norton talking about all the different men who had tried out for Brad Pitt's role because that was his breakout yep. role, that film. Uh, have have a listen, though, to the guy who took it the hardest for not getting Brad Pitt's job. It was Grant Show and Mark Ruffalo. Oh. And then the third person I was sitting next to on a flight from Europe back to L.A., you know, very friendly and great. And uh, he finally said, you know, I hate Brad Pitt. I said, no, you don't. He's like a really good friend of yours. He said, no, I hate him because he got the part. And I said, oh, did, did you want the, the part? And he said, you couldn't tell when I auditioned with you? And it was George Clooney. Oh, for Thelma and Louise, nice. which was Brad's first movie where he got to see his bottom as well. But Ooh. also, she'd forgotten auditioning with... She said that she was so taken with Brad Pitt that everyone else who came in, she said, I was... She said, I actually couldn't act. I was so thrown by yeah. how, his how charisma. How beautiful he and was. And how beautiful he was. Wow. He was a model, wasn't he, Seth? Yeah, as was she. And so when they said to her, OK, who do you want alongside? She said, the blonde guy for sure. Oh, but what about the presence of Clooney? I know. No. Didn't you know what I mean? She didn't even remember. Speaking Jeez. of George Clooney, though, this is very cute. He's uh, told the story of his disaster proposal to his wife, Amal. I've got the ring in the box and, you know, the song starts. You know, we've been having dinner and the song starts. And I go, you know, I think there's a lighter because light the relight the candle, which I blew out, you know. Relight the candle. I think there's a lighter in that little box behind. And she kind of pulls this thing out, this little drawer, and there's this diamond ring in there. And she looks at it and she's like, there's a ring in there. Like, <laughs> like somebody left a ring there years ago, you know. And I'm like on my knee like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. She's just sitting there like going, oh, my God, oh, my God. And I literally said, listen, I really would like to marry you, but I also am not young, and I've been on my knee now. <laughs> and I could, like, lose a hip. Awesome. Oh, Clooney. He's Smooth as an eat. Charisma. I love He'd him. love telling that story. Yeah. Well, well done, hey. says. You're listening to the Fitzy and Whipper podcast. Congratulations. Mel B's engaged again. Love Mel B. The spice girl Mel B is getting married for yeah. the third time, Sarah. Got that wrong. I love Mel C. Oh, yeah, yeah that's right. Yeah. Mel C, she came into the studio 40s, 40s, yeah, in, awesome. uh, in the UK when we did the show out of I'm there. I'm talking yes. about Scary Spice. The one that... Am I? Yes. You are, yes. Yeah, scary Spice. Yeah, so she is marrying her hairdresser, her 36-year-old hairdresser, who has been working on her hair for 11 years. This is an unbelievable story. Apparently, she walked into the salon and she said this. Okay. His response was... And then she went with this. Zigga Zigga is, uh, looks amazing on her. Oh head. my god, looks perfect Zigga Zigga. So, yeah, so this is, uh, you know what, you obviously, she's been through some pretty tough times. And she's opened up to a hairdresser. I love this story the whole time while she's be- while he's been doing her hair. There was talk that um, hairdressers should also be trained as therapists because you have that one-on-one time and conversation very quickly uh, can turn serious or deep. 
I I reckon it's the one profession where you open up the most. Mm. I suppose a therapist would be that person. You, but have, you haven't opened up for 10 years No, then. no. I, I cut my own hair, so I just sit there in front of the mirror and talk to myself <laughs> about how sad I am. <laughs> As you run the buzz oh, over the yes. top. So, Tommy, have you ever, uh, ever opened up to Jenny, who used to work at Parrot? She works uh, for herself um, now. No, Jenny, Jenny reveals a lot about herself. Does I don't, she? I, yeah, I don't, I don't give as much. Because I, I worry. Uh, you know, sometimes a hairdresser, when they start talking, they stop snipping, and that annoys me. That, oh, yeah. That it they, takes longer. Yeah, exactly right. So, Jenny, I just want it in and out, make awesome. me look beautiful and move on. A hairdresser, there are moments where I would dare say there'd be a lot of people in the chair crying their eyes out, talking about their life and opening up. Yep. Could be, and if, as a hairdresser, I'd love to hear from hairdressers or if you've hooked up with your hairdresser, is that a great moment just to I th- I think maybe it's because put your shoulder out to cry on and go, well, if you're mm-hmm. looking for someone, I'm right here with a pair of scissors in my Short hand. Short back and sides and a shoulder, please. I think it's because you're sitting down. It's definitely, you're sitting down, you're relaxed, you're stopping. Like your life is so busy at the moment and all of a sudden you're stopping and then there's just one other person that you're communicating with. So that's where the sharing comes in. Yeah, it's small talk, but then I find hairdressers ask quite personal questions because they want to have gossip. So sure. it's like it's like they know you're in the chair, particularly if you're getting a hair dye for a woman. You're there for three hours. Yeah, you're gone. And you're sitting there. And so they're asking you stuff and to fill the silence, you don't want to be the rude person who says, I don't want to talk about that. It's, it's, I, I can't believe, like, I mean, you're born to be a hairdresser. To to listen to people's problems all day long, oh, every yeah. day, but they'd would laugh be about draining. It. You yeah. would laugh about it later, like, oh, my God, I had this one, she's doing that. Interesting, too, because Talal, my hairdresser, my current hairdresser, Talal well, wants currently in Silverwater, isn't no, he? No, no, no. He's still running the corner store down the street. He's just around the corner selling the avocados. He was arrested. Does a great Savalaki, but Talal is going to come around next week. Great news, he's got a portable shisha pipe, which he's going to bring over as well. Oh, great. You can have a so few So we can have a few shisha out, out uh, What's on the... in the shisha? Tobacco. Flavoured tobacco. Right. So you've gone a step so, up from vaping now well, to he, the big thing. He comes around, he puts the Quran on, we listen to the Quran, he explains a lot about that, and then cuts my hair and has a, a, a suck on the pipe as well. Right. Um, and then he has, everyone has a bit of a laugh when it's done. Yep. And, what the and hell? we all laugh that Talal has no idea how to cut hair and he's just done <laughs> yours. Is a great, he's great with a falafel. He's great with some scissors. You love him because he brings snacks to the house. A little bit, yeah. There you go. Yeah, see, but do you open up to him about problems in your life? Not so much. Uh, no. I mean, Tommy had his, re- his hair cut down by Morgan recently. Now, Morgan's done my hair as well. Morgan is the number one hairdresser at Channel 9. And I tell you what, he has the goss. Well, I would only say there'd be one hairdresser with name, but it's great to hear that he's number one. <laughs> Good night, mate. They've got more. He turned me into more. Sylvia Jeffries, which I thought was oh, absolutely do. stunning. I've had the Sylvia Jeffries. You've had the Tracy Grimshaw. <laughs> And Tom, it looks phenomenal. Thank you so much. I wonder if he's had a crack at a few people who work at Channel 9 before. What, to hook up with yeah, them? Yeah, to hook up. Why not? Oh, without a doubt, he would have hooked up with Dickie at some stage, I would say. Or Dickie would have... Hard to say at this stage. All right, can we get Renee on? Uh, Renell. Oh, it's Renell from Campbelltown. What's it Hello, like? Is how it... you going, guys? Renell, Renell, as a hairdresser, I mean, first of all, is it draining, number one, that you're... You, you know, you're op- these people are opening up to you every day and you're hearing their problems? No, I love my job. I've been doing hairdressing for 30 years and I've got my own business as well. So, yeah, no, it's not. It's nice. You become friends with them because you see them more than half their family does. Mm. Like, Would you I date a client? Oh, God, no. Why <laughs> no, not? No, because it's stepping over the line. Definitely not. And I'm married anyway, so okay. well, there's no way that I'd date a client. Is it, well, has there ever been any flirting by mm. a client for you, Ronell? Um, yeah, like in my like early twenties yep. when yeah. I didn't have my own salon, definitely. But you know, you're working, you've got to, there's there's a line there, so definitely not. Imagine if you did, and then. I didn't work out and they want a haircut next time. Well, they can cool. go elsewhere. Big deal. I'd, I reckon I'd run at it at 100 miles an hour. Is there Great th- place to meet someone. Are there certain things that people bring up in their lives, Ronell, that you go, oh, I probably shouldn't be hearing this stuff? Yeah. yeah, Yes and no. Like, it depends how close you are. Like, a new client wouldn't tell you probably mm. everything. But, yeah. you know, if you've been with someone a long time, you sort of go, oh, okay. And you just you just have to listen. Yeah. Ronell, what do you... Just what, want to talk. What do you do if you... Um, if someone comes in and you have a look at their head and they've got nits. Oh, well, um, yes, that has happened before. What do you do? Well, 
Well, obviously, you call the parent over because 99% of the time it's children. Yeah. And you just explain to them that, you know, your child has had life and, you know, mm. if they're live, obviously, you, you know, you say... Yep. You have to take them home and then you have to sterilise everything. But yes, yeah, so 90% true. of the time you have to be polite because, you know, everyone, yep. well, 90% of people had this. My boys had it when they were little. So, yeah, of course. You know, it's not a big and deal. Douse really. their head in petrol yeah, and then off you go. Some <laughs> adults can get mitts, <laughs> can't they? Send them out with a knit kit so they can go home and treat it. Or crabs. Time. Have you ever had it? A- oh, my gosh. Oh, Far where have you gone? Oh, my God. <laughs> Sorry, sir, but this is a hair salon. We do not do that area. <laughs> Sorry, the Koala is out of control. Oh. Please put your jeans on, Mr. Whipfley. We do not do that in this salon. The Fitzy and Whipper Show is a Nova podcast. For more great comedy shows like this, head to novapodcast.com.au.